General John Kelly is the new chief of staff for uh, Donald Trump. And uh, we're told over and over that he's going to impose discipline and he's trying. So that's this story. Uh, I'll tell you what I think is gonna be the conclusion at the end. But Politico reports in a conference call last week, Kelly initiated a new policy making process in which just he and one other aide, White House Staff Secretary Rob Porter, a little known but highly regarded Rhodes Scholar who overlapped with Jared Kushner as an undergraduate at Harvard, will review all documents that cross, cross the Resolute Desk. All of a sudden, everybody's calling it the Resolute Desk. I know that it's been the name for a while, but now everybody's using it now that Trump's in office. It drives me crazy. It's the most irresolute person sitting at a desk called the Resolute Desk. Anyway, Rob Porter is a little known guy. He's uh, the staff secretary. I'm gonna get back to him in a second, because apparently he's making monumentally important decisions. Um, the new system, though, is designed uh, to ensure that the president won't see any external policy documents, internal policy memos, agency reports, and even news articles that haven't been vetted. Now, this is actually a fairly normal uh, process in a White House, both under Democrats and Republicans. Hey, we don't want any Lone Rangers walking into the Oval Office, especially if the president's stupid like George W. Bush was. Uh, the insiders there said Bush would listen to whoever was last in his office. So Dick Cheney, in a separate story, they also reported that Dick Cheney would always stay around after the meetings were over to talk to Bush last. Gee, I wonder why he did that. So what you wanna do is present all sides to the president, give him all the options and have him decide without undue influence by some random straggler that walks in the Oval Office. That's exactly what the job of Chief of Staff is. So by the way, John Kelly, nice job in trying to get it under control. Uh, so they explained that the keystone of a new system is a decision memo that will, for each Trump policy, integrate the input of cabinet agencies and policy councils and present the president with various options as well as with the advantages and drawbacks of each one. Look, when I say nice job to John Kelly, I don't mean in terms of policy. The policy options they're gonna present him are going to be, from our perspective, universally loathsome. So that's not what I'm talking about here. but. It at least gives you some order and some way of making decisions in a rational way. Here's the drawbacks, here's the upsides, here's your set of options. This is elementary stuff. It's ridiculous that it was not instituted until now, eight months in. I thought that he, Trump was gonna manage things so well, it was gonna make our head spin. Uh, it seems like he made his own head spin. So why do they need this? Well, Politico also reports one official called Bannon a disruptive force who did not want to follow any set path for making White House Decisions. So when Bannon was still at the White House, he just walk into Trump's office and be like, okay, here, here's an article I found. It happens to be from Breitbart. Oh, oh, it says you should fire all my enemies and put me on the National Security Council. And Trump's like, oh, is that what it says? Oh, oh, and it says that you're really smart. Oh, I love this article. It says I'm smart. Okay, I'll do whatever you say. So now Bannon's gone, and they're like, no, we're not gonna do things in that way anymore. And look at that too. Bannon knew what an idiot Trump was and how easily controllable he was. That's why he would do the things that he did, it's so obvious. Now, a senior White House administration official says, in the past, a few senior administration officials unilaterally made policy calls that everyone had to live with. It seems like those days are over. Well, not quite, as you're about to see, but um, uh, they give an example here. In policy meetings for trade, for example, Porter, uh, this is going back to Porter now and how decisions are being made now. Porter has been left to mediate disputes between the National Economic Council Director Gary Cohn, who favors free trade, and protectionist Peter Navarro, the head of the White House's National Trade Council. Wait, this Porter dude who is a White House staff secretary is making the decisions a president should because the president is out golfing. So the man child can't concentrate. Are you kidding me? Who's right, Gary Cohn, who is more of an establishment figure, a former head of Goldman Sachs, CEO of Goldman Sachs, or a more protectionist like Peter Navarro, which is what Trump promised on the campaign. That's a decision Trump should make. That's a very, very important decision. He say, like, ah, I gotta go to Mar-a-Lago, I gotta go to Mar-a-Lago. Uh, so here, have the secretary do it. And this case, not secretary, it's in you know, taking dictation, etc. But it is not, that he is going way above his pay grade to make monumentally important decisions because there's no one at home. Um, now, as to whether this will stick, the president made policy pronouncements without consulting all the stakeholders in his own administration political reports. Absent a formal policy process, their input often didn't make it into the, to the president's desk. 
That was the old days, theoretically. Well, uh, they continue to say whether a president known for freelancing can live with military discipline is another matter. And then Tevi Troy, former domestic policy deputy assistant says, the process works if people stick to it. So here's my prediction. <laughs> of course, Trump isn't gonna stick to it. Now, Kelly will have order and they will set those memos in front of him. Now remember, Donald Trump can't read past a tweet, I'm not joking. This is from his own advisors who said they first gave him four page uh, briefings like they used to give on national security issues to Obama. He couldn't handle four pages, then they brought it down to a page. Then they started putting pictures and graphs on the one page to make him pay attention. Then they started putting in positive things about him so that he would read his own name. Then they brought it down to half a page and then finally preparing him for NATO uh, meetings in Europe, they brought it down to tweet size information. The man child will not pay attention. So, I mean, sure, give credit to John Kelly for putting together memos that has both sides and a set of options for him. Even if I don't like those policy options, that's at least how the process should work. You think he's gonna read those? He's not gonna read those. He's gonna watch Fox and Friends and go, hey, what did Bert and Ernie say? Oh, they're so right, they're so right, I'm going on Twitter. For example, his military advisors told him, you can't do the transgender military ban. There's a process for that. So that's you can in the long run, but you've got to go through, you got to do a study, you got to go to the Pentagon, you got to do all this stuff, right? And he's like, oh yeah, you can't tell me what to do. Bert and Ernie told me that I could do it. And he tweeted out. You know, today in the news, they're like, oh yeah, well, well, since he tweeted out, it's not really, it's not an effect at all. A tweet is not a real thing. The president can't order things through tweet. So James Madison, defense secretary, is like, we will now begin the process of trying to figure out if we're going to take out transgender people from the military. And by the way, he has the authority to not remove them from the military. Because you can't control the man child. And what did you do today? His advisors, oh, we got a memo, we put it together, and then we put out a statement in the morning saying, oh, that article in the New York Times about how Mitch McConnell and Donald Trump are fighting, fake news, ridiculous. No, they're on great terms. Donald Trump looks at Bernie Ernie, Bert and Ernie on Fox and Friends, and says, how do see so right? Mitch McConnell and Paul Ryan are bastards, I can't believe they're not listening to me on the debt ceiling. So uh, we ask you guys, I'm clear on this, but this is a poll that we've been doing. Um, will Trump eventually fire John Kelly? TYTnetwork.com slash Kelly. Political and all the others are very impressed and they're saying, no, 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 he, Kelly's in great shape and everything's gonna be fine and he's put things in order. He's done a fine enough job trying, he will not be able to control Trump. And at some point when he says, no, Mr. President, you can't fire everyone that has ever investigated the Russia. You can't fire the special counsel and the head of the Justice Department and the head of the FBI. You can't fire them all. He said, why? I want to fire the Bert and Ernie Dolby, I got. You're fired. So we'll see. Uh, that's why I like to make the predictions ahead of time. But my guess is, yeah, he'll fire Kelly. If you like the Young Turks, you'll love Young Turks membership, tytnetwork.com slash join.